first I want to thank Pastor Howe for this opportunity to preach. We're going to go straight into the word of Jeremiah 33. 30. Call to me and I will answer you and show you great and mighty things, which you do not know. One, if we call to God. Two, then he will answer us. Three, he will show us our destiny and give us a vision for our life. In Proverbs 29, 18, it's where there is no vision, people perish. Why do people perish? Because no one called to God. This is why so many people walk around like vagabonds. They have no direction for their life. Everyone in this room's goal in life is to go to heaven. Well, these people, they don't have a goal in life. They have no aim in life. They're just living life. And James 4 and 8 clearly states that if you draw near to God, then he will draw near to you. Jeremiah 29, 11. For I know the plans I have for you, declares the word. Plans to prosper you, not to harm you. Plans to give you hope in the future. I will call from God on my life. What about you? Do you have a vision or goal for your life? As God develops me with the help of my parents, the church plays a very important part. I'd rather hear a leader pray than hear him preach. Um. I was with my okay. I was with my dad two weeks ago at Tuesday night in prayer, and I asked God, what am I supposed to preach on? He said, Advent. So my dad told me we need to listen to a call of anguish by David Wilkerson. Here's some of his speech. Whatever happens to the anguish in the ministry, it's a word you don't hear in this pampered age. You don't hear it. Anguish means extreme pain and distress. The emotion is so stirred that it becomes painful. Acute, deeply felt inner pain because of the conditions of anguish. In you or around you, deep pain, deep sorrow, the agony of God's heart. We held on to our religious rhetoric and we in our revival talk, but we become so passive. All true passion is born out of anguish. All true passion for Christ comes out of the baptism of anguish. You see, a true prayer life begins at the place of anguish. You see, if you set your heart to pray, God's going to come out and start sharing His heart with you. Your heart begins to cry out, Oh God, your name is being blasphemed. And the Lord and the Holy Spirit is being mocked. The enemy is out trying to destroy the testimony of the Lord's faithfulness. And something has to be done. There is going to be no renewal, no revival, no awakening until we are willing to let him once again break us. Folks, it's getting late and it's getting serious. Please don't tell me, don't tell me that you're concerned when you're spending hours in front of the internet or television. Come on, Lord, there is, some, there is something that doesn't need, there's some people who don't need, who need to get to the altar and confess, I'm not where I was, I'm not where I'm supposed to be. God, I don't have your heart or your burden. I wanted it easy. I just wanted to be happy. But Lord, true joy comes out of anguish. There's nothing of the flesh that will give you joy. I don't care about how much money you have. I don't care what kind of new house or car you have. There's absolutely nothing physical that can give you joy. It's only what is accomplished by the Holy Spirit. And Amen. obey and take on His heart. Where are the David Wilkerson's and the Leonard Ravenhills of today? You don't find many of these people. These guys preach under unction of the Holy Ghost and had such convention in their heart and voice. If we're going to see an awakening in America, we need a many women to rise up like these spiritual general. Come on. What we need now is a revival of holiness, a revival of character, a revival yes. of people who are utterly selfless and prepared to lay down their lives at the altar for God. Come on. Leonard Ravenhill. Timothy 4.12, let no one despise your youth, but be an example to the believers in word and conduct and love and spirit yeah. and faith and impurity. Young people of this church, revival is yours. It starts with a daily walk with Jesus. If you're not praying, you're straying, Leonard Ravenhill. The prayer service is the most important service of the week, and it also and it's also the most canceled and the less attended. Joe Dawson. John ten twenty seven. My sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. John ten four. And when he brings out his own sheep, he goes before them, and the sheep follow him, for they know his voice. Let me teach you about the voice of my Jesus. Luke twenty two forty four. And being in agony he prayed more earnestly. Then his blood became like great drops of blood falling down to the ground. Jesus was in agony, so he prayed more earnestly. We're the ones who will pray more earnestly. If there's someone in here that will answer the call of God in your life and pray more earnestly. When the revival in Wales broke out over a hundred years ago, here's the basis of the, mes of the message from Evan Roberts. One, confess all known sin. Two, deal with and get rid of anything doubtful in your life. Three, be ready to obey the Holy Spirit instantly. Four, confess Christ publicly. 
Isaiah 43, the voice of one crying in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord, make straight in the desert, a highway for our God. Amen. How do you think John the Baptist felt when he read that scripture verse? And then he thought, wait, it's talking about me. Matthew 33, for this is the one who referred to by Isaiah the prophet when he said, the voice of one crying in the wilderness, make ready for the way of the Lord, make his path straight. This is how I feel when I read Luke 4, 18 through 19. And you should feel the same way. It's our time, church. Luke 4, 18 through 19. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the, to the poor. And he has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives and recovery to the sight of the blind, and to set liberty those who are oppressed, to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord. One, anointing to give me the preach to the gospel of, to the poor. Two, the anointing to give me to heal and restore people. Three, the anointing is to give me to proclaim freedom to the captives. Four, the anointing to give me to open blinded eyes. Five, the anointing is to give me to set people free. Six, the anointing flows of God's timing and proclaims God's timing. Martin Luther was the great leader of the Reformer Nation in the 1500s, was known for the 95 theses that he pinned to the door of the church. He went to the church and came back and read the Bible. He told the church... There is more than what we have. Church, I'm a young reformer, and there is more than what we have. There's an awakening coming. Come on. God bless you. Come on. Amen.